All right, so we're going to be talking about relations and functions. A lot of this first part is going to be big time review of Algebra 1, where we just want to lay down the foundation for what we're going to be dealing with. So all a relation is is, is really a connected X and Y. Uh, just like a relationship is in real life, um, a relation is just people that are connected. And so we can represent a relation in a multiple different ways and we're going to talk about that but big time about a relation is that it has a domain and a range which is an input and an output something you put in something you put out typically the input is the X's typically the output is the Y's so we've got a set of ordered pairs this is one way of representing a relationship this is X and a Y an x and a y and so that connects two to three and three to one when you have zero you have five when you have four then you have negative three if you have the starting point you have the ending point essentially and so the domain of this is just all of the input values all of the x's so we have two three zero four and negative two and that's just all those x's now, typically it's kind of nice to, to redo those in numerical order. Negative 2, 0, 2, 3, 4. All right, and so the range values then are just the y values, the outputs. So what do we get out? We get 3, 1, 5, negative 3, and 9. And same deal, typically we rearrange those in numerical order. So set of ordered pairs, one way of representing a relation. Another way is just a table of values, and you've been using this for quite a while. And that's just where you pair the x with the y right next to it. No big deal, just another way of representing it. A mapping is where you have all of the x's or all of the domains in the, the left oval, and you go to the range in the right oval. And so you have the 2, 3, 0, 4, negative 2. And you just draw arrows to connect the X with the Y that goes with it. Uh, we can also plot these points in a graph. Two comma three. 3 to the right, up 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, negative 3, and negative 2, 9 would be off, off a little bit up here. But, and you could also represent it with a function, an equation. And so f of x equals... Um, it could be 3x squared minus 5 would be an equation that would represent anything where the input is the x and the output is the f of x. After you put in the x, you get the function value. So what is a function? And Actually, I got a little ahead of myself. A relation would just be the y equals, and so you relate the x and the y. What's a function? A function is a specific kind of relation. It is a relation, but it's when every x only has one y. I like to think of it as every question only has one answer. Kind of like when you click on something on the computer, you only expect one thing to open. Um, when you click on Microsoft Word, you want Microsoft Word to open, not Microsoft Word and Internet Explorer. And so it wouldn't be a function if both of them opened. And so there's a couple ways to test for a function. Um, one way is just looking at your ordered pairs. You can see if there are any repeated X's. It's not a function.
The other test is the vertical line test. And essentially, if you have one x that is going to two different y's, if we look in, on this graph real quick, had we had two that told us to go to three and to negative, negative four, it would have been two points immediately above and below each other. And so if you took a vertical line, it would cross through both of those points at the same time. So if a vertical line passes through two points or more points, it is not a function. Because then the question is two different answers, or maybe three or four. And so that's what we're going to look at in the next one. So are these, are these functions? Well, negative 1, negative 4, 1, and 8. All of the, these x's are different, so yes, this is a function. Um, 13, 16, 16, and 13. Um, and so we've got 13 goes to 14, 16 goes to 5, and 16 also goes to 7. So this is not a function. So for that reason. We move on to some graphical ones. C, if you plug in in one, you're going to get two different y values. There's a lot of different x's that you could plug in. So this is not a function that doesn't pass the vertical line test. Because if you take a vertical line, it crosses at two spots. Take a vertical line on the next one. It kind of looks like the polynomials we were dealing with. It only ever touches once, and so this is a function. And on this next one, vertical line test here, it crosses twice. Vertical line test here, it crosses four times. This is definitely not a function. Because for a number of the x's, there are two different y's, three different or four different y's that it could be. So, function notation. We've been dealing a little bit with this. But the input is still the x. The output is still the, the f of x, or the y value. And so, we call this f of x, is how we read it. Notice how x is in the equation. So this is our function. Let's say this is 2x squared minus 3, and we want to know what f of 5 is. All this is is fancy mathematical notation for saying take the 5 and plug it in for every single x. Notice how this x has been replaced by this 5, so we're going to replace every x we see with a 5. Kind of like all it is is substitution. We're evaluating our function when x equals 5. So 2 times 5 squared is 25. Remember your order of operations here. And so 2 times 25 is 50 minus 3. So we get 47. And so f of 5, the y value when you plug in 5 for x, is 47. So negative 3 in the same way, you take and plug in negative 3 in for the x. You just want to make sure you follow order of operations. Negative 3 squared. Negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. So that's 18 minus 3. And you get 15. And so when you plug in negative 3 into your function, you get 15. That's the connected x and y. And f of b plus 3. And so this is evaluating, but we're... We're plugging in an expression in for our function, and, but the same idea applies. We get b plus 3 in place of our x. And so we have to remember b plus 3 squared. We can't just distribute the squared over that addition. We have to write out b plus 3 times b plus 3. So we get 2 times b squared plus 3b plus 3b plus 9. That's 6b. And so if we distribute, we get 2 times b squared. 2 times 6 is 12b plus 18 minus 3. So we get 2b squared 